Hello and welcome to the symposium. My name is Carl and today I'm going to be talking about the Macedonian phalanx and how it's different to the Greek phalanx and the why the Roman maniple defeated it. Uh, I guess we will begin with Philip of Macedon. He was a, as you can see, a grizzled soldier by the time he became king of Macedon and he expanded Macedon's holdings immensely and professionalized their army and he grew up as a hostage to Thebes. Thebes at the time, this the this was after the Persian invasion of Greece, after the subsequent Peloponnesian War, and during the Theban hegemony of Greece, where Thebes had defeated Sparta and taken on the role as the leading military power in the Greek world. And this was, he was a ward of Epaminondas, I believe, if I can recall correctly, um, and learned a huge amount about uh, military tactics, especially phalanx tactics, from him, because he himself was a great general. Um, when Philip took the throne of Maston, he reformed their army and created the Mas what we call now the Macedonian phalanx. So this is a traditional Greek phalanx, as displayed in the movie 300, but this is a relatively accurate depiction, to be honest with you. Bronze face shield, uh, overlocking, so they're they're interlocked, so they're they're solid like a wall, and that's what it looks like, doesn't it? This is a wall. It's it's very it's going to be very difficult to get through this formation, and that was the point. It was a defensive structure, very successful defensive structure, and so you would have essentially a scrum. As far as we are, as far as these things are described, a kind of pushing match, uh, where the two phalanxes would would Greek two two Greek cities would bring out their armies, the phalanxes would clash, and then there'd be a pushing match back and forth, and then one would break and run, and the the people who who fled generally kept their lives as well because the Greeks didn't have a huge amount of cavalry in their armies, and the person who flung down their shield and and spear and legged it could undoubtedly run faster than the chap who was still carrying their shield and prepared to fight. So this is a very, very effective um, tactic and method of waging war. And it was incredibly effective against armies that weren't prepared for it. As in, if you were a, 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 a barbarian mob, for example, there was no way you were getting through a phalanx. You'd have to do something quite spectacular in order to defeat this. And this is something that the the Persians learned through many different uh, through many different experiences fighting the Greeks uh, at Thermopylae in, in particular, and uh, going along um, right until um, Xenophon uh, at the Battle of Canaxa, where the the Persian infantry they weren't Persian they were going to be levies from Asiatic infantry, should we call it, uh, apparently didn't even stand to meet the charge of the Greeks because this was such a powerful looking formation. And so this is this is a very, very, very solid way of doing things. So why did Philip change it? Well, like I said, it's a defensive tactic. It, allow, it allows you to put up a wall between you and the enemy. But it does make offense slightly more difficult. And so but this this is a tactic that has gone on for a very long time. This is a, a, an image of the Stele of Vultures, which is a Sumerian tablet. So approximately 2,000 years prior to the time that we're talking, you can see that they still had the same kind of tactic. Huge shields and spears coming through. Although these spears don't look all that long. But the, the method of defense on the battlefield was clearly an important aspect. But then you look at the Macedonian phalanx, and you can see that this this is not the same thing. We do not have interlocking shields now. What we have are massive, like 18 feet long, spears called sarissas. Um, I think they're called sarissas. It's been a while since I've read about this. But the the fundamental difference is that this turns the phalanx into from being a defensive formation into an offensive formation. And I think that th this is this is something that I think modern video games are getting wrong about the Macedonian phalanx, uh, especially, say, Rome Total War. It's to designed to simply push through the enemy with dozens of sharp spikes forcing them backwards. And this, I mean, you can just, you know, imagine this face on, and you can imagine just how dangerous this thing would have been if it was coming at you. You are still nowhere near the man who is stabbing you at this point. And if you were to get slightly further, you'd find other people trying to stab you, for rank upon rank upon rank. And so a, a dense Macedonian phalanx is 
one of the most difficult and dangerous things that you can encounter. And this is what the Romans said when they were conquering Macedon. Uh, this um, uh, Paulus, uh, the Roman general Paulus, uh, one of the one of the uh, generals at the Battle of Pydna, which was a Roman victory. Uh, it was a near run thing though, and the Romans had many battles against Macedonians. They had three Macedonian wars, but um, Paulus uh, was again, rent his garments as he witnessed his legions falling back before the devastating onslaught of the Macedonian phalanx. And the phalanx, he would later say, was the most terrifying thing he had ever seen in his life. Because it was an offensive weapon. And this is... The the way that modern video games tend to portray it is as a defensive weapon. As in, haha, you can't get through my spears. Well, okay, but you should be marching forward and stabbing them and forcing them back and breaking them and getting them to flee. Because battles were generally not won and lost by casualty numbers in the scrum, in the in the fight of it. They were they were won by who ran away first. Essentially, ancient battles were generally, and there are of course exceptions to this, a test of metal. I mean, you can find examples like Hannibal at the Battle of Cannae, where he takes an inferior force and manages to envelop a Roman force, trapping around 50,000 of them inside a ring of his own men, where they get cut down. And th uh, that's a different video that I'll go into. But generally, battles were won and lost on the, the nerve of the men themselves, whether they would hold their formation and push forward, or whether they'd break and run. And the point of the Macedonian phalanx was clearly to just force them back, force them to continually retreat until eventually it, they had nothing to do but run away or get stabbed down where they stood. And like Paulus says, the most terrifying thing he'd ever seen in his life. And he, it's not like the Romans were strangers to war and engaging with terrifying foes. So it, it, this this should th I think this tells us a huge amount about the the offensive potential of the Macedonian phalanx. And it seems that this is genuinely lost when whenever I play like a modern bit like Rome Total War, I, I've I really do find that the, the Macedonian Phalanx is not an effective weapon to attack with. Uh, I mean, it is obviously slow and cumbersome and would have been in real life. Um, but marching just straight forward, because, you, I mean, these, these armies were enormous. You know, if you've got like 16,000 uh, phalangites, as they did at, say, the Battle of uh, Sinocephaly, um, you, you have this huge, huge long line, like a mile-long line of guys, like eight men deep, or possibly deeper, all with pikes sp spring out, and they're just marching forward, methodically, stabbing as they go. Man, that is a that is a terrifying thought, isn't it? You know, this is this is genuinely something that is world conquering, as Alexander demonstrated. But it's not without its flaws, obviously, and you can see where this the, the flaws come in when you see the Roman uh, legion themselves. Um, this, this is a legion in testudo formation, but you can you can see that the the shields are large enough to cover the body, and the whole point of the Roman formation here, the manipular formation, was it was effectively like a phalanx with joints. The shields didn't need to overlock because they were big enough that they essentially covered the entire man anyway, and so it gave the legion a lot more flexibility than they would otherwise have had. And this was the downfall of the Macedonian phalanx. On even ground, it's very easy to keep a very tight formation, and you can simply just keep pushing forward and push your opponent back. But if at all the phalanx is broken up, then small groups of men carrying shields and short swords like the Romans did, uh, can get in very, very close and just start stabbing relentlessly and hacking and chopping. And this, this, was, the, this was the Macedonian report after some of these battles. They were just shocked at the wounds that the Romans were able to inflict with these short swords and the fact that they could just use these shields to get into the phalanx and actually eat it up from within itself. And the, I mean, there are various different ways that the Romans ended up defeating them, but it was never it was never something that was just oh that was easy you know that was inevitable. I don't think there was anything easy or inevitable about it. I think it was quite a quite a difficult job for the Romans by all accounts. But the the flexibility of the legions were what allowed them to overwhelm the phalanxes and eat them out from the inside, which is not something they could actually do to a normal Greek phalanx. If you didn't have those options. I mean, if you've got an 18 foot long spear, when someone gets within that, you've got to pull out your little short sword. And the Macedonians had a small buckler that they had across uh, across their left 
arm and hung on their shoulder, but it's not nearly the equivalent of the hand-to-hand combat uh, equipment that the Romans had. And this is this is effectively how the Romans won. But um, this, this, I think, is... I mean, it's just the main thrust that I have here, is that the, the Macedonian phalanx is not like the Greek phalanx. And I think this is just a point that people are not truly appreciating, because it really does turn the Greek phalanx into a, a really offensive weapon, and it's the sort of thing that does a huge amount of damage. I mean, God only knows what it looked like when two phalanxes came, two Macedonian phalanxes came into contact with one another. I, I, I mean, we don't know, frankly. We don't know what it was like when two pike formations engaged. Because, especially in uh, the sort of era of pike and shots, where people didn't have shields to protect themselves from stabs from, you know, five, three meters away, it's, it's hard to envisage. Because, I mean, one stab will be enough to kill a man, especially if he's not wearing solid armor. And so, these would either have died very, very quickly, or they wouldn't have advanced on one another. But um, when advancing on other soldiers, I mean, this was a hugely aggressive form of warfare. Again, much more aggressive than the previous Greek phalanx. And this is why Philip was so successful and why Alexander was enabled to go on to be so successful. I mean, there's no doubt that Alexander is easily one of the greatest commanders that world history has ever seen. But if he wasn't given this immense professional military machine with brand new technology that turned it into an absolute stormer of uh, uh, an army and this we we know that these i mean the, the macedonian phalanx overrun overran prior greek phalanxes purely because it was able to be more aggressive with much longer spears that the greeks just couldn't defend against so we, we but if 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 philip hadn't constructed this army and bequeathed it to alexander after he had died then it's entirely possible that alexander wouldn't have been able to conquer persia but uh, it was the the lack of flexibility of the macedonian phalanx that allowed the roman legions to come in and annihilate it so i hope this is interesting and i'll i'll see you in the next video